Hello everyone, it's time for Claire's Crafty Corner collaboration for Valentine's Day. I've been going through my stash. Let's see what I can come up with. Um, I'm going to try using up some wood pieces, some beads, just some things I happen to have here in, in, like I said, in my stash. And let's see if we can create something with all of this. Stay with me and enjoy the video. I'll be right back. <music> everyone this is Billy welcome to Billy home and creations now let me just show you a few things I pulled out here uh, to start with this is a big bag of uh, strung beads and I'm thinking about that I also have oh excuse me some of these glass um, flower pot things. I can't remember what they're called. Oh, you put them in your flowers. I have a bunch of those. Need to use them up. Uh, came across this pretty hummingbird that I really thought, you know, I really like this. I, it needs uh, re-resined or repainted. It needs um, fixing up. We're going to do that. And then I have a bunch of these little wooden beads that I had in a container. And, uh, I'm not going to worry about painting these just yet, but we're going to use those. And then I had a couple of, uh, this is wood, this is, well, it's a mirror actually underneath there. Uh, hard plastic, this is wood, we're going to use those. I'm going to make a collage, basically. And um, I did have some wood words cut out here. My neighbor, Gary, God bless him, he's gone now. He was always cutting things out for wood, and he made me these two loves. So we're going to use those. Then, in my garage, I was looking around, and I came across three of these big hearts. Now, these hearts, this shape, you don't see this shaped heart anymore, but uh, I think that's back in the 80s decor, maybe. But I'm going to use them. I've got three. But for today, we're just going to use the one. And what I did... I went out and I just sanded. I just sanded the rough edges off. Don't know what this was, but uh, sanded the back. We'll put a hanger on it. It's not perfect. The edges, they've been routed with the router. But to get these ready, the first thing I need to do is I'm going to seal this in with gesso because I'm thinking about using resin on top of all of this. Um, so I have acrylic gesso. I've had this a long time. It's probably quite thick, but gesso is um, a type of paint, but it's used um, to, oh gosh, seal in wood or porous areas. It's still liquidy. I still have it in there. Big brush, medium-sized brush, my cup of water with a little dish soap in. So I'm just going to start painting this hard. Well, let me start painting the back. I'm just going to start painting the back and then I'll let that dry, paint the whole heart, and then we can go from there. I'm also going to seal in these uh, loves too with the gesso. So see if I can get a good wad on here. Oh, there we go. It doesn't look too thick. I think we can work with that. So here I go. I'm just going to seal it. So we can work with it. I'll get back with you when I'm finished. Okay? Just take a second. Of course. That's how videos work, right? See you in a bit. Well, I'm still painting, but I wanted to wanted to say, um, before I forgot, if you're painting with gesso, use gloves. I mean, this, it's kind of difficult to get off of your skin. I mean, look... You know, like you could go the acetate route, but this is probably why my hands and skin looks rough as it is because, uh, you know, I do use acetone to get paint off my hands sometimes. But I'm still painting. I just wanted to let you know that. 
and I'm also going to uh, gesso these two hearts. So until I get that all finished, I didn't think you needed to watch me paint. Let's see if that'll cover. It'll cover. It might take a couple coats, but okay, I'll be at it a while. I just had to check in. See you in a bit. Well, everyone, I almost have all of my priming done with the gesso, but I still have more preparations to make before we can put this all together. So first thing I'm going to do is if you noticed, I've got a couple of fine lines here on this heart. I want to have an angle and uh, I had to measure out what is it? Four and three eighths down here, four and three eighths. I made my sideline here. So as I progress to the middle or to this line, I should be pretty close with the same angle. And what I'm going to be gluing on is this, these beads on string. So little by little, I'm just going to cut a piece, lay it down, Keep going, stagger if I have to, until I get to this point. And what I'm going to use is my Beacon uh, Fabri-Tac Fabri Fabri glue, permanent adhesive. So I'm going to sit down and I'm going to probably turn this way. And I'm just going to get started gluing. And then we have other things to glue, so I'll just get after it. Just get a fine bead here right on this line and see how close to the edge I can get I might have to come over a little further here just to start with and then I need a little pair of scissors so let's just see where this takes me I'm gonna go to the edge as close to the curve of the router that I can and as straight as I can that looks like that's where she's going to be so I'll just take a moment to get that in position and once this one is set I can go from here gosh maybe I will have to turn this around the other way but hopefully that will work out. Let me grab better scissors. I've got three, four pairs sitting here. They probably all need sharpened. So if I stagger, I don't know how well these beads will stagger. Well, I can somewhat. So let's see. Next row. There we go. I'm not going to worry about the little tufts of well, maybe I should get some of that off this string. I think you can take a lighter to it and just burn those. Might have to do that when I get them down here. So I'm just going to keep going. Boy, it took me most of the afternoon today to try to um, figure out how I was going to actually do this. Plus another project I'm working on. So most of the day was just spent playing, thinking, finagling. So I finally got what I wanted in my head. I got that able to um, progress with that. Or I don't know how you would say that, but there's a lot of thinking involved sometimes but um, I'll just go with the flow and there's always changes of course when you're doing something like this but I just wanted to make sure it felt right with what I had in mind before I started so I could have you know most of it lined out and figured out and ready it would be different if you weren't making a, ve a vehicle, a video. You would just go. Just start and go. Move that one over.
Well, I hope it didn't tear, uh, bore you to death <laughs> watching that little bit. But uh, they're down, and I still have my bit of an angle. Now, I was just going to go around the edges here with a lighter and see if I can't burn those little pieces of thread off. Well, that works. Let's start the house on fire. Just kind of burn those down a little bit. Oh, I see kind of a gap here. Whoops. And you might have wondered, you might have wondered why didn't I use a glue gun? Well, I thought about it, but I then I didn't know if I could maneuver these in time if I needed to shift and move them around a little bit. So that's why I didn't use it. But now it's glue uh my glue gun is heating up. And I'm going to try and just uh fix a few of these these little beads that are loose. Glue that in there. Like here. Put that one down. Well, I don't know if I should cut those off on this edge. Because I'm thinking about going around and kind of rounding these off. I could have started in a spiral probably, but I don't think that's going to work either. Unless I just come around like in this part. I think I'll do that. Just come around that way with the glue gun and try to fit those in as close as I can. So let me try that. What else is loose over here? A few gaps. Still a little wet, but I can push them in and move them a little bit. This, this uh, let's call it a plaque, is going to be quite, um, dimen uh, do I want to say dimensional? No, that's not the word. I just want to say, uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Maybe today's been too long. But let me get over here. I don't think I need to come onto this side. I just need to start right in there and go around. We're not going to, hopefully not going to notice it. Let's see what happens. I can doctor this up a little bit so the edges aren't so blunt. Yeah, just bring those, bring those in a little bit. At least with the string, you can push them a little closer if you have to. Let me hold that a second. Get that in there. I do want it rounded so it does look like a heart. But, positive note, I used up quite a bit of this uh, stringed beads. That's a plus. For some of you that don't know, when I, st I started this channel for basically, well, a couple reasons. Basically, so um, I could use up these, these things that I have saved forever to use them up, which is happening. It's great. I'm, I'm, I'm accomplishing, accomplishing that. But the other reason... So I would not procrastinate. You know, sitting here thinking, well, I could do that, or I could work on that. Oh, well, maybe I should dig that out. But this way, I'll tell you, I am obligated to finish a project. Um, and it feels good. And it's been such fun for me. But like I said, I have no reason now to procrastinate. I am getting things done. However, with the resin, I have found myself um, spending a little more than I should rather than using up what I have. But, you know, the two might go hand in hand. I don't know. But that's why. 
get a little spot in there. Come on. Work with me. Work with me. There. That does look somewhat better, I think. So if you're just dangling there by yourself, let's do this side. Then I'll be a little bit happier about it. Stick one in there. How's this going to work? I'm going to have to single this one out. And then we have more things to glue. More things to glue. I'm curious as to how many feet of this stuff I used. But that's okay. And you're... I'm sure if what I have in mind works out, I, I'm sure you'll like the result. No guarantees, though. Can't ever guarantee that. But I try. There we go. That's a little better. Squeeze those close together. Maybe. I guess I could have finagled the glue rather than the Fabri-Tac, but that's a good product and they're on there come on you hold that a second and I think we're done with this all right now I'm gonna set this aside to completely dry and we'll get some other things ready to go I have to move over here way across the room Got everything piled. Okay. Now, what else I have here is the one heart. I'm not going to use both. I'm just going to use this one heart here. And my chair's wacky. The glue gun will help with that. Let me bring you down a little bit now. So you don't have to look at that big old piece I had going on slowly. All right, here we go. I'm getting smoother. All right. I'm just gonna put these little uh, resin flowers on this heart because I had them. And I thought about a tattoo, but with the plan, a tattoo would not have worked out for me. A temporary tattoo. So we're gonna add more texture. That was the word texture to this piece by adding all these little components. I'll set you down here, maybe. Oh, I wonder if I have another flower. I think I do. We can fit another one there, can't we? Let me just go grab the right behind me. I made a bunch of these last Valentine's and I can't remember the video number but I did two beautiful Victorian ovals that are wall hangings. I uh, I'm keeping the black one but the pink one I'm gonna put in my in my uh, online shop. I'm slowly I'm slowly building that up slowly but surely. All I have right now is I have some uh, coasters and some of my winter knit hats which um, you might want to look at that just go www.billyholmancreations.com and I'm building a website so I probably have 40 things on there right now but I haven't really there that looks better at a slant like that I think I keep trying to do that part in the evening, but I never get to it. Let's get this on here. There we go. Don't know that we need anything around that. You know, little things. Don't know for sure, but we'll use these down the road. I did have a bunch left over. These moles are beautiful. They're in my Amazon storefront. 
um, and I, the name passes me up, but they're beautiful flowers. Look at, I did these in Let's Resin Chameleons. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. More stuff to use up. Okay. Now, I have all these little pink hearts. And when I was trying to lay out a design today, I thought, oh, I, I'm going to paint them later. But for right now, I want them higher than they are. They're, you know, they're just maybe, what? I don't even know what they are. Uh, gosh, three, three sixteenths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double them. I'm going to double them up. Just gonna glue them together. And I'm hoping the glue gun will work for that. And keep them planted there. Move my lighter and stuff. So here we go. I'm just gonna glue these into place. And I don't know what to do about the sides. Because you know they're they're gonna have that gap there. Hopefully that won't be noticeable. That's what I'm hoping. And they're not exactly the same because these were hand cut. So that's that's the next step. Just glue a couple of these together. I guess I should find one that fits first. Okay. So that's not too bad. See, that's a big one. We'll find something to go on there. I actually thought about getting some um, air dried clay and going around filling in those seams, but I don't think that sounds a little extreme. Too extreme for me. Right now, I'm not in the mood for that. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But I just want these higher. I'll just... I've been sitting here watching YouTube most, most of the day on my laptop here. I'm watching Popples. Now, let me see. Poffle, P-O-F-F. L E apostrophe S creations, Puffles creations. Now this woman does some very beautiful things with resin. Um, she's got a knack, a real good knack, and I'll put her link in my description box for her YouTube channel. But I enjoy watching her. She uh, really goes outside the box and she does a lot of intricate things. And when it comes to painting tattoos, oh my goodness, she comes out with some beautiful things. So, you might want to watch her because I'm sure you can learn a lot from her. I just do and talk. She explains things. There we go. I left two out to so use singly. Singly. And I need to get her down or you're going to burn your nose. Get down, please. Come on. Go, go, go. Oh, oh she's heavy. She's my youngest and my... Heaviest, my gosh, she's heavy. She's a short-legged cat, but a big body. All right, well, I hope that works as planned. Did I forget something over here. Oh, a butterfly. That's what I wanted to do. That's why I didn't need that other one. I if I can get it off. Yeah, so let's pull this off. I didn't see it hiding there. That's what I wanted. Put you down. Somewhere like that. Your wings hanging over. Okay. Now, I have the love, which I painted, and it's rough. I mean, I sanded it, but it's, it's, I don't know what it is, fiberboard or something. 
So what I'm going to do now is I have these flat beads, flat back beads that I got from Timu, and I and I really I really don't like the color. So we're going to use these because I'm going to paint this. I'm going to paint over it. So I'm going to use these up and just uh, bubble top the love, the word love. Let me unplug my glue gun here. I'm done with that. Because for this, I'm going to use the B7000. Oh, we've got all kinds of glues going on today, don't we? And, excuse me a moment, I need my little, my little wax bead picker-upper. Let me grab that, I'll be right back. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Because, do you know what I did? Big mistake, Billy. I I got myself a diamond painting and I oh don't that is so time consuming. Um but I've got up sometimes at night late and worked on it a little bit. But um yeah, that's something I didn't need to do is get a diamond painting. But it's really lovely. It's a uh oh, what are the names of those uh European cows with the long hair. It's one of those amongst a bunch of flowers. So it's really cool, but I oh, wasn't even... Oh, let me try this for a new craft. They're beautiful. I've seen some lovely work. When I was at uh, the last art fair or the Christmas festival this last winter, there was a whole booth of nothing but all these beautiful diamond paintings that this lady and her husband did. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. And then my neighbor, she does uh, diamond painting and she's got, she showed me some beautiful, beautiful ones she's done. And her husband does the frames for her. So, all right. I need to get a little bit, this stuff is weird. You know they have some pencils that are waxed? I wouldn't mind having a couple of those and then just sharpen them, I guess. So I'm just going to start with the big beads. Let's see. I, I think I'll just start going with the curvature of the letters. I'll start in the middle, probably around here. And uh, here I go. I'll just give you... An example, you don't need to go through this part of the project. So, God, I can't seem to do that. There we go. And I am going to order some of those magnifying glasses you, you wear because these cheaters are not working for me and I still haven't gone to my eye doctor to say, please give me some bifocals. I miss my bifocals. But, uh, anyway, this is what I'll be doing for the next, oh goodness, hour at least. Okay, be back with you when this is finished. Bye for now. Welcome back, everyone. I am done putting these little half pearls on the wouldn't love word so back to the gesso back to my good old gesso I'm gonna be painting everything with the gesso the beads the heart with the flowers the love and then I'm gonna also paint these little pink hearts so that's what I'm doing for the next hmm, little while and when I'm done with that I'll get right back to you and you can see what we're going to do next. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Well, I've got a lot of these things gessoed. I have the little hearts, the love, uh, this heart. And now, <laughs> remember this sun catcher, this hummingbird. Well, I don't want it this color. So I was wondering if it was possible to pop this old resin out and yes it is so i just took my pliers 
now watch it be difficult because I'm on camera. I just wiggled a little bit. There you go. And it's popping out. It's coming out. So I have to remove all of this. And of course, I'm going to fill it with white, white resin. Um, you know, I, d I haven't done UV resin a lot, so I don't know if I should try to UV it or just go ahead and mix a little bit of regular resin in there. Oh, God, I just don't want to break the frame. <laughs> Excuse me. That scared me. I'm going to um, take a, my silver mirror pen and I'm going to paint all this gold. Or should I just paint the whole thing white? No. Oh, I'm second guessing. I'll have to see if that works with my plan. I'll let you know. Meanwhile, I'm going to pop these out. There we go. I don't, I couldn't tell you how old this is. It was in my mother's belongings. But, uh, yeah, we're going to do something a little different. So I'll get back to you when, when I'm done with this. Boy, it's been a lot of steps, hasn't it? But I think you'll like it when I'm done. We'll see. We'll just see how that goes. All right. I'm going to play with it. I don't want to cut myself, so I'll be careful, I promise. See you in a little bit. <laughs> Bye. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I was able to get the glass out of the hummingbird, and it was glass because, yeah, it was glass. I was able to get that out. I went out with my Dremel, and I cut off the little loop-de-loop -loop for hanging. So that's gone, and we have a clean slate. So, I just have some contact paper here. It's wrinkled. It was in a roll, and I had to try to get the roll out of it. So, what I'm going to do, and then I have some exciting news also. Um, what I'm going to do here is, first of all, get the paper away from the contact sticky stuff. There we go. Almost. Okay. Here we go. I thought I had it. I thought I had it. I need to cut these nails because I know I'm going to break one and when they get this long, they get down to the quick. But right now I'm hoping to get this undone with the help of these claws I've got going on here. All right. All right. There it is. I see it. I see it. Okay. There. So, contact paper. The hummingbird. And I'm just going to get that on there. Make sure it's going to stick. Maybe I'll cut a little excess of this paper off so I'm not flailing it around. Or fighting it. Let's just get some of this off of here. And I received oh, something so awesome in the nick of time working on this project. And I have to show you. I just have to. Unless you saw the video. You probably saw the video first. I, I should put the video of this up first. But let's resin. Look what they sent me. They sent me the lamp. They sent me this awesome, awesome, brand new UV advanced lamp. It's the two part with the tray, lights underneath, lights on top. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I was able to play with it uh, so I could make them their video, but it came right in the nick of time. Let me just spray this down. Make sure it sticks, and we're going to use that lamp with this hummingbird. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna use the resin. They sent me three bottles of UV resin, too, hard style. And um, we're gonna use resin, but you know what else we're gonna use? Do you remember the little kits used to get with these metal little shapes? Um, I think I still have some pieces somewhere. 
they were like Christmas ornaments and the kid the kits were for kids and they had all these little plastic melting beads. Well, ta-da, guess who has stashes? A stash of the little melty beads. But I'm gonna use them for filler. Okay, and I'm just gonna fill um this this bag is is a mix. So I'm just gonna use this up. If I can't make a mess first, but let's see if I can't just fill this little bugger with all these different colors. And I don't know what resin will do to them. That's that's what's going to be interesting. I don't know if they'll melt under you know the heat of the resin, but. I do know UV resin gets warm. I'm sure it doesn't get as hot as your regular two to one, you know, or your regular um, epoxy resin, but I just wanted to use these up because they're, oops, missed a wing, because they're a mix. And then maybe if I find the other little frames that I'm sure I have somewhere, we'll try to, whoa, play with those. Okay, let's set that aside. I'm going to just put these in as well as I can. And I, I want I want them to lay somewhat flat because I hope to dome this. And this is, a, I think, the last portion or part of what we're going to do to finish that heart. I wonder if I should submit the heart to Claire's Crafty Corner for her um, Valentine's collaboration. If I'm going to do that, I have to talk about that first or on the video. We'll see. I might just have to change my introduction a little bit. That's all right. Okay, if those are padded, padded down, let's see if I can't just get some of these. Well, you know what? Then I will surely dump it. So let's just not worry about that. And clean this up later. Let's see what happens. They're gonna hopefully they're gonna melt. Use a few more in there. Said I don't want big lumpy pieces. This is a filler. That's what I'm gonna consider this a filler right now. Instead of using bunch of UV resin. Plus I get to use these up. There's my tweezers. There's, these yellow ones are big. But yeah, I was looking at that when I was working on it and thinking, oh my gosh, this reminds me of those little kits. And I know I have some of those melty beads. So let's give it a try. I'm going to look sideways to make sure some aren't Really? Well, there's quite a few sticking up. I guess I don't need to be that. It's mainly these big yellow ones. Give it on. Maybe I'll just, you know this lamp goes to five minutes. Oh. And you just press it. <laughs> you don't have to keep pressing and pressing and waiting and waiting and pressing and pressing. It just goes on, on by itself and it times itself and oh my gosh it's amazing I I've seen so many artists use this lamp and I'm thinking oh, I would love to have one of those lamps and lo and behold thank you let's resin let's just do this okay now here's the tray it pulls right out I was finishing some jewelry today I have some tape on there. I'm just gonna leave it. I don't I don't wanna untape it right now. So let me see where I can set this where I can lift this onto this tray. This is exciting. All right. So where are you? Here we go. Come on. 
over here. We're going to put that right in the middle. Oh, and I don't want those to melt on my... Let me be sure to get the stragglers away from the edge. I don't want them to melt on my tray here. That would not be a good deal. I don't know if you could ever get them off. ones that are sticking are fine. I just want these loose ones off of there. Okay. Get you away from it. Just this last tail end here. Maybe those can go. I think the hummingbird is going to be our vocal point of the heart. It's hard to say. Get, 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 get. Okay. Pat those down so they don't roll around. That big one's got to go. Okay. There's some missing there. Oh, for goodness sakes, Billy. She's good. Now, the tray, it's got two little separate levels. You can do it uh, low to the bottom light or higher to the top light. And we're going to go to the top. And I have a hard time with the angle with this because the cord barely reaches my floor where my power, my six-way power cord is. All right. See if you can see this. Two minute, three minute, five minute. Hit this three times to go for five minutes. And then we wait. I got so excited, I forgot to put the resin on it. <laughs> I did. I got so excited. Oh, heavens. I forgot the resin. All right. Let me stop it and just hit that power button. All right, Bill. Get a grip here. Yeah, we need the resin, don't we? Because I don't think anything would have happened here if uh, I just set it under the lamp. Goodness sakes, Billy. There's a few more flu. All right. Gloves. Wear your gloves when you're working with UV resin. And I'm going to put on my, um, not my ventilator, I'm just going to put on a hospital mask here. Because I'm in my craft room. So, let's do that. I can't believe I did that right now. Alright, here we go. Three bottles of 100 grams. All right, let's just we'll do it. We'll do it good once, and then we'll see if I can't um, top coat it. I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Look how thick this is. This is the clear hard type. So we can get it started here. Oop, I just went over the little divider line. Should try not to cover those. I guess we'll see what happens. And the design, right? Let's get its little head. I should have put some in first. Well, you know, when I get excited, I just jump the gun, it seems like. Does that happen to you? Get too excited, then you just don't think straight. 
guess I don't have to be excited not to think straight. But, uh, yeah, I should have put the resin in first. Oh, gosh. I was just so excited to tell you all. Because now I can do some more jewelry, resin jewelry. So that's pretty exciting. It's going down under there. Did it get here yet? No. I should have colored the resin white. See, there you go. I'm not thinking. Oh, well. Maybe we'll do the top goat white. I don't know. See what happens. I just want to see if these melt. Wouldn't that be cool if they did? Wow. Where did I leave off? Over here. The blob. If it, they stick out too far, I might just have to go into the shop and sand it down to the metal, which I think is a possibility. Oops. No. The tiny areas here. One bubble. All of that in one bubble. Isn't that amazing? Oops, come on. This is going to be so cool. Are you anticipating what I'm doing? What we're going to have when we finish? Maybe I shouldn't put the picture up on the um, thumbnail. Oh, that would keep you guessing. Oh, I don't want to be cruel. Okay, let's see. I saw... I'm just going to poke couple down here. You can go. I've got a scrap piece of tissue here. Let's see that's going way over. Get over there. All right, look across it again. Oh, not too bad. But if they melt down, let's see. Okay, now, Billy, I'm gonna turn this, get it into the lamp. And it's gonna do both sides at the same time. That's what's so cool about it. In the middle she goes. All right. Five minutes. One, two, three, and I'll put you on pause. Okay, five minutes is up. Check this out. I cleaned up my mess. I found the instructions, and these are called cooking cooking beads, cooking crystals, and uh, it tells you what the equipment preheat to three seventy five. And not only do I have the instructions, but look, can you believe it? I just don't believe it. Oh. Okay, let's pull them out. Let me take this mask off. Whew. It's warm in here. Here we go. Oh, well, look. Of course, it didn't melt because that's not 375 degrees for sure, but five minutes rock hard look at that oh i forgot resin in here for gosh sakes billy all right back to the drawing board let me tell you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do the zap that little spot i missed right here in the flower and then there are high spots I'm going to go out to my shop real quick, and I'm going to sand that flat. Then, 
we'll do a white top coat. Okay, that'll be the plan. I'll be right back. Hi everyone, I'm back with the hummingbird and let me tell you what I've done. I I cut the flower off. I went out with my little saw on my uh, Dremel and just cut the flower off, which meant the beak is a little shorter than it should be, but the flower was going to inhibit my plan. So I, I thought about it and thought about it and I thought, well, just get rid of it. So then what I did is I went and did several layers, like four layers of thin resin to give this if you can see, give this hummingbird some dimension. Because rather than it staying flat, I just kept uh, layering and layering till I got a little bit of a dimension and a little, it's more defined. So when we use it on the heart, um, it'll stand out better. Um, I don't know what color I'm gonna paint this. I still don't know what color I'm gonna paint the heart, but I'm going to keep thinking about that, and then I'll let you know when I was out there. Remember when we stuck these hearts together? Uh, they didn't match up completely, so I went ahead and just sanded the edges to make them, you know, more, what do I want to say, cohesive. And so I'm going to go ahead and finish gessoing the sides here, and then we'll be ready to put the heart together. So I will see you shortly when I'm ready to do that. Okay, have a good afternoon. Bye. Okay, everyone. Oh, let's start putting some things in place. I have my heat gun warming up and I pulled a piece of uh, clear clear plastic um, or what do you call this? Shelf cover or contact paper. There we go. And I am just going to Put this on the back of the heart because we are going to end up using resin. So let me get this started and we'll just cover the back. I did paint it white previously. So let's just turn this over and try to get this down. Harden the wrinkling sound of paper, but if you have a big area to protect from resin, contact paper is the way to go, I think. I think we've got enough. Just get that down and I'll trim the edges. Let me grab my grayer here. Oh, it's time to do a cleanup in this studio, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Goodness sakes. I'm just going to get this down, especially around the edges. Because when we pour, we'll just let it go over, whoops, over the sides. I don't want to uh, ruin my... Back side of this. I think we're good. I think we're good, and then I keep on going. Isn't that how it is? Nothing like fiddling. Okay. I should have a cutting board down here. I mean, a uh, cutting mat. I think I can just. I'll uh, grab my sector knife. Oh boy, that needs a new blade. I need new blades. And I'm just going to uh, go around here and trim that off as close as I can. Great. Okay. Let's come around this side. No. Like I said, I need to get a new blade on here. I... 
I think I've figured out the color I want to use, and I think I want to use an ombre effect, if that's possible. Let's see when we get there. And I have no idea how long this video is going to be. I'm just going to uh, splice and dice and speed up and do the best I can so it's not too terribly long. But there is a lot involved in this project. Pardon my ring from the paper. It's right on the floor. All right. I think we're good to go. There's a little edge right there. Let me trim that off real quick. My glue gun should be ready to go. We're just going to tack things down. All right, there's a, there's our heart. Let me raise you up a little bit so you can see all of it as we go along. Okay, hold on. Oh, well, that was my bad. We are manual here. Let's move that that way. This way. I can go a little further. There we are. I can almost see the whole thing. Okay, I've got the love. I've got the heart with the flowers. I've got my little wooden hearts. I also am going to use these resin hearts I made, oh gosh, last year. They, uh, they're they pretty thick. And they're made out of a um, candy mold, a silicone candy mold. So, if I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the hummingbird on last after we're done coloring. So what I want to do with the love is I want to have it sideways, like that. I can't remember how much space I wanted it to the bottom, but I think about there. So let's get the handy dandy glue gun out. I wonder if I should, oh, you know me. If you don't, if you're new, I am, um, I fiddle a lot. I second guess myself sometimes, but there is always a plan, always a plan. We're gonna use E6000 to, and hot glue, because this will really secure it. And the hot glue will help us get it down for the time being. I think. Maybe we won't need hot glue. But let me just use this on this piece. On this part of the piece. I'll just get a... Oh, I've got things. Things. I ordered some shelves that go on, that are on wheels so I can put into this room in addition to everything else that's in here because I want to get things off the floor always bending over rooting for, for something and this way I can have them it, they're big enough to hold totes so we'll see how it works out I'll let you know when I get to working on that And with the E6000, if it oozes out, you can just peel it away. That's what I like about it. But it will hold. I don't want it in those. There. All right. Let's see. The plan is... I'm going to have love sideways here. I think we can go about... About there. Will work. If I have to, I can slide it around. Let's get this heart down. Let's just use the blue gun. It's a smaller. And if I'm trying to go by, I, I want, I don't think I want that cockeyed. I think I want that somewhat, um, you know, straight this way. Okay. Now, 
I've got these these hearts. I don't know if I paint if that will uh, show up very well or stick to the resin. I guess we'll see. I just want to put some of these here, here and there, in rather in kind of a cluster, a bit of a cluster anyway. We'll use them all up because they're too big for earrings. That's for sure. Can't remember what I used them for before. I had something going on with them. Yes, let's just while well, I can. I want to group them a little closer. Something like that. They look too planned out that way. I don't know. Let me sit down. You see the top of my head? Excuse me. It's a, the hair's a mess as always. All right. It's a little too close there. Come down. All right. We'll come down. Should have grabbed more glue. Another stick. I gotta stand, I can't do it sitting. Pop that to here. Just make him rather just my center. I want them this way, don't I? I think. Oh, shoot. I guess we're going that way since those are stuck already. Okay. So we've got all kinds of textures and all kinds of shapes. I think I'll just even them, evenly space them. I think that'll be pretty. close to that, aren't we? You might have to leave. I don't think one will fit in there very well. I guess it can, all right. We don't want it touching that. Pull it down a little. Okay. Does that look good? That's a bit wonky. Oh well. to balance that out and put one up here. Should we do one here? Hmm, here? No, I think I like it there. Okay. Right about there, like that. Then we have the wooden hearts. 
And we'll do the, just the same sort of thing. We'll just put them down sporadically here. But these I want to keep rather straight. I got some dried gesso on that. Let's see. String. going at an angle, aren't they? That's okay. Might not need all of these. Get one in there. Why not? A little close. Hearts everywhere. Here, don't we? Oh, gosh, okay, carried away. I thought about putting, um, some of those glass stones in that you put in your plants, but that's they're not going to fit. Let's see if I have the hummingbird. Like so, oh, is that going to be pretty? I'm going to have the hummingbird there. I wonder if we need a heart. Should we bring a heart over? I don't know. I'll fit there. Should have made room for one there. I did not. Well, I think we can put one down there. Oh, what are we going to do with you? I think that brings it too high, actually. Okay, we have an extra. Then my thoughts were putting, you know, a few stones like that to fill in the gaps. I might do that. It's my tweezers. I can pick up these pieces. Okay. Should I put the rock on? Oh, I don't know. I don't have... Do I have anything? Oh, I do. I just thought of something. I had... That I used a little mold for, and I made these tiny little hearts. Oh my goodness, I forgot all about them. How many in here? 
show you. This will work. Oh gosh. I had these little, these are little resin hearts. Get rid of the stone, you know, you know work. Put a little one there. There we go. We can fill up a few gaps there. That'll work. Let's put a hole on it. Turn it over. No, oh, that tip's broken. Is that too many hearts? I could put one up here. Hmm, I guess we can put that one on there. Okay, that's better. I th think that's all I have. Let me look again. Oh, no, two more. Here we go. All right. Now we're in good shape. Just use these up. Two more. And we'll put maybe one down here. Is that too many hearts? Well, if it is, I don't know. Let's just put them down. Well, that's a bottom. Well, it's raining hearts and dogs. Tiny. I don't have any of those finger protectors for. I think that's like heart overload. But that's what I'm doing. I'll finish putting these on and then I'm going to take some white spray paint and go out to the shop and paint this whole thing one good coat of white spray paint except the hummingbird we're not going to spray him yet if we do it all but uh i'll catch you when that is dry we're almost done i promise we'll see you in a little while <laughs> bye hello everyone i'm back with the heart now, I spray painted it white, but there's a few more touch-ups I want to do. Um, if you'll notice, I wondered how it would react on the resin, but these hearts here, they bubbled, and they have a few spots on them. So I just want to fill those spots in before we pour the resin. What I have here is my tester's white enamel paint, and I'm just going to use... My little uh, micro brush and touch up these little areas. Oh, come on. There we go. Get that lid in there. I'm just going to use this and just do a little dabbing and fill those in just like so. It won't take me long. I want to try to avoid them showing up when we pour. It matches up fairly well. I just want to fill those holes a little bit so they don't show. They might look like they've got little dots. That's okay. Dots are better than bubble holes. Probably take a paintbrush and smooth that over. I see some hot glue right here. Oh my gosh, we got a fight. My goodness, they're worse than kids. They're brothers, and Brian is the instigator. 
He must be the oldest. Three of the boys are brothers. And he shouldn't be cat fighting. He's neutered. I don't understand it. But, uh, anyway. Well, I never had a brother or sister, so I never understood the bickering between siblings until I had two kids of my own. All right. Dab them again, I think. I've been racking my brain trying to figure out what color, oh, there's more pink over here, what color resin to pour, but I think I have it figured out. Not sure, there's just so many options here. Sometimes it's hard to make a decision, isn't it? Oop, I just made that one bigger, didn't I? Okay, leave it alone, Billy. That's good. And I saw what this is by the butterfly. Just a piece of piece of glue. All right, while that's drying, I need to do something else. We are going to work on the hummingbird. And the definition is pretty good that I built up dividing these parts. We're not gonna leave it that colorful. We could, it'd be okay. Let me see if you're on the screen. Yes, you are. I could probably bring you down a little bit. Hold on. So, what I'm going to do is pick out a gold mica. Okay, I found some just for you online. UK gold. And I'm going to use my um, polyurethane mixed with the mica powders to color the hummingbird, but I need to also get the edges because they're a bit silver, silverish gold. And knowing that I need to paint a foundation before I do the polyurethane, instead of digging out gold paint, I'm just gonna use my deco color premium gold paint. And uh, See if I can get some kind of coverage on there. I haven't used this for a while, so the build tip looks still looks good. So I think maybe I'll put a glove on so I don't get gold all over this these fingers that I'm holding it with. And uh Let's just first go around the edges and see what kind of coverage I can get here. Oh boy, I'm not ready. You know what else I need? I need my other lamp. Give me a little light over here on the subject and it's tangled up. Goodness sakes, Billy, get it together, darling. All right, it's just a portable lamp that I kind of bring over here and helps me see. I don't know if it helps with the video or not, but it helps me see better. Okay, there I go. Here we are. Oh, that'll work great. So, just go around the edges first. on it. 
At least now we know that those little plastic pieces can go in resin. And you saw how many I had, so we'll put those to good use. Is that doing it? I think it's doing it. Come on, I don't think it's dry. It might be the first one I ever bought. I just grabbed one. Come on. I know you want to. There we are. All I'm doing is flattening the... Oh, goodness. Maybe that one is done for. I'm ready today. I have to tell you. I'm more than ready, aren't I? Okay, I'm sorry. For goodness sakes, what well, I'm going for it. There we go. There we go. We've got gold now. Gold hummingbird on a white background. Do you think that'll work out? Well, we'll do more than that. We'll do more than that. Oh, there it is. Gosh, I could have got my testers out. got streaks. Let's just hope I can get rid of them. I probably should have used my testers, but this dries quicker. That's why I did that. All right, let's uh, wipe this tip off here. Put that away. I'm going to get a little bit of uh, acetate here and wipe that eye off. Got resin in that. Need to refill my acetone. Whoa, I didn't need that much, Billy. Come on. Just needed a bit. Get a little a new some of that off of there. Paint that in. Paint the little eye in again. So that's not going to take that off. Look at that. It's dry already. Let's see if I get some streaks. Oh, okay, dry already. Put that aside. 
Now, let me get polyurethane here. Clean the tip off, it dried on there. Bit, but I think it'll work. And we'll get some this pretty gold. Oh, look at that. Isn't that a lovely color? A little scoop. It'll be pretty generous. That should do it. Just mix it up well. Try to get rid of the lumps. It's a different gold, isn't it? It's all right, I just needed a foundation. Okay, another paper towel here. And a paintbrush. This is my favorite one, it's rather small. See what I can do with it. I'll just leave the beak to last. There we go. I can still see the bumps. Oh, that is. Everything's covered up. Oh, I tried to keep this clean. A fleck or something right here. Get off. So I'm just going to go along and paint this entire bird. And then I'll go, I'll come see you and uh, after I get some resin mixed, and then we can pretty much, after the resin cures, we are done with this beautiful piece. So I won't keep you waiting. I'll be right back. Hello everyone, I'm back and I've mixed up six ounces of resin. I was only going to do four, but then um, when I measured B, I went a little over two ounces, so I thought, well, we'll just go three all the way. Now, I glued down the hummingbird, and I had to repaint the hummingbird because the gold I used was so bright that it, it, was, just, it was just too bright. So I went ahead and got another just for you online UK and this is the look this is the uh precious gold pigment. It's it it's a little lighter so I toned down I toned it down that hummingbird a bit, painted the eye on and everything's secure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up it's on one of my uh, Costco cake paint or cookie sheets, which comes in real handy because it has a lid to it. And of course, we've got the contact paper on the bottom. So I'm just going to set this up. And my resin's a bit bubbly. This is my Let's Resin resin, and it is cold in here. I tried to give it time to warm up, and I did use the debubbler. But uh, hopefully we can just mix them bubbles right out of there. Now the reason I wanted a particular gold 
it's because I want to use some foil and I double checked my foil this morning and it was not as bright as that other gold that I had so let's just mix some gold in here now this is going to be fun without getting it all over everything but there you go see that matches up really well to the hummingbird so we're just going to use clear resin with some gold flecks in it and pour um, like I said before I was so I was pretty confused as to what color to paint this and the more I thought the more confused I got and then I thought well how about let's try this so I hope that's not too much gold but that's what we're doing so I think it's going to be lovely and then once it's finished, I might repaint the back, of course, and uh, put a hanger on it. So, I'm going to get a stick that I can throw away after we get our foil mixed in there. I'm pretty excited about this. This took a bit of time, but it was made with love and great care. That's for sure. Come on, you get you off of there. Look at them bubbles. Oh, I do. I want to break that gold up a little more. So we'll. I think that's good, and I might place some on the obvious places, like where these little bubble holes showed up. They got covered a little bit, but not real well. So. I hope that's broke up good enough. Let me get a piece here. Like, let's just throw some foil on there just to be sure it gets covers those holes. I hope you like this. I think it's going to be gorgeous. And I'm going to take my time pouring because it is thick, thank goodness it's thick already, and I'll have to keep watching it for bubbles, because normally my Let's Resin Resin just, oh, it's bubble free when it's the right temperature. That's why I really like it. And I just want to cover those bad spots there. There's one there. One more over here. Okay, so this is my idea. I'll make sure I can. Oh, I saw a bit of glue back here, so I'm going to make sure I get a piece of gold behind this heart here. Kind of cover that up. But everything else looks pretty good. Those. Watch, I'm going to pour anyway and they'll fall off. <laughs> okay. One more stir. I'm very nervous about this. Should we give it a squirt of alcohol? All right. Oh, I want to sit down. But I better not. Let's just go quickly. Make sure we get on the top of everything. I wonder if I should use a spoon. I might be better off with a spoon. Just to make sure we get it all covered. Oh, look at all that gold's gonna go in there, in the holes. I hope that's not too much gold. Maybe get a little off there. Huh? Put a little bit of clear right here. So, I'll just take my time. I'm going to have to take a uh, micro brush and go, for instance, well that one doesn't have a tip on it, but go in and around like that. 
make sure resin's all the way in there best I can get it brush will be better okay here we go finish this off hello everyone well here it is here is our beautiful wooden heart with wooden hearts a hummingbird and some gold flakes isn't it pretty I really like it it's all cured and the next thing I need to do is just remove the contact paper back here and uh, thank goodness I put that on I'm gonna go ahead and take my heat gun and just heat the edges a little bit so I can try to get this off okay I'll be right with you and I'm gonna mute this part Ooh, it's making the paper weird. It's wrinkling it, lifting it. Let me just see if I can get a corner and start this. Let's see. So I don't know why. Well, the paper's melting is what's happening, I think. So let's just get a corner here. There we go. Let's see if I can't just... Well, well we're going to be just fine. Don't even need to heat most of that up. Let that go. And it's not pulling the paint off the back, which is lovely. I probably could put another coat on the back, but I don't think so. I think this one coat is just fine. Ah, it's magic. Say la vie. There we go. Nice. There's a little bit there. I might, I'm going to take, um, probably take a nail file here and just, um, go around the edges and soften those up a little bit. But I can do that on the side. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put in a hanger. I don't think this would be used as a tray or I just really don't. I think it'd be something best put on the wall. So I have these alligator hangers and I got a whole box full. Look at here off of Amazon Amazon. And these are the screw in type. They're not the one with the little tiny nails that you hammer in and and uh hope it holds. But um I am going to put the screws in because this is a nice, it's not real heavy, but it's heavy enough. We don't want it falling off the wall. So I'm just going to go, oh, and you need to have the ziggity zags on the bottom. So that's what I can call them, the ziggity zags. And I'm just going to eyeball center the middle of the V in the heart here. And with a pencil... I'm just going to try not to move it. I could get a ruler and be actually precise, but I think eyeballing is pretty good. I'm just going to draw a little circle here. And I could measure just to make sure. Let's see where the center of those are from the top. Oh, about three quarters. Now this one could come down a little bit, so I'm going to go there. And this one's in the middle. Okay. Now I, um, rather than going outside and getting my Dremel and changing the bits, I did purchase a little drill, a little jewelry drill from uh, Timu, and it's charging on, you know, it hooks up to my computer to give it power. There's a little power button here. And uh, 
me see if I can't just get a starter hole going. Oh, look at that. Here we go. The wood's pretty soft, so we should be all right. I'm going to force it. I'm going to turn it this way so I can be closer. I have a little Phillips screwdriver here. And hopefully, you can see me. I'll bring you down because I want you to get a better look at the heart too when I flip it over. So hold on. Whoop, here we go. That's good. Okay. Have a seat, Billy. Do you know I slept till noon today? Oh my gosh. I couldn't believe it. But I was up till I think 3.30. Uh, editing another video. So let's see if I can get this going. Oh, turn it over. Sometimes it helps if you have those magnetic screwdrivers on the tips to hold the screw. Pardon my nails. Did them one day, broke one the same day, lost one the same night. And the other day, this one fell off. I'm just not a nail person, apparently. <laughs> oh, heavens. Stay there, please. I'm going to try to... Oh, for goodness sakes. Not that coordinated today, either, am I? I've had enough coffee, probably too much. Get on there. There we go. Yes, that's going to work. Let's give a little muscle. I don't need to do any gluing on this. I'm also going to go out to the garage and or the shop and engrave my name in here somewhere. But easy peasy. This was so much fun. I was able to use up a lot of little doodads and uh, I think it turned out really really pretty I don't I won't say luxurious but I do like the effect the gold had but you could do this any color with any little thing you want to glue onto a heart and there we go it's in there we are. Let me flip it over and look closely. Look at that. It's got a nice sheen. Most of the gold settled into the beaded areas here. But uh, I think it's really pretty. You can still see the love. I did suction out the resin that was filling up in these holes the best I could. And uh, there you have it. So, thank you for watching, everyone. I'm going to put this on the wall, take some lovely pictures, and wishing you a happy Valentine. And I'm hoping to get this into Claire's collaboration, so thank you once again, Claire. I appreciate all you do for us artisans. So, have a wonderful day, everyone. Take good care.